Jesus be a whole motherfucking fist. Goodness gracious. What's up? What's poppin' T-Squad? What's poppin' to my underground fam? It has been a full year, but we are back with my All T All Shade Underground Season 2 Episode 1 review. Oh my God. Y'all already know it's a requirement when I do these underground reviews that I have to come on here look like I'm a runaway slave. Ain't no motherfucking hair and makeup, bitch. I got to go back to my roots, my ancestry for this shit so I can feel all the fucking pain and the anguish from then to now. Oh my God, let's get started. The episode begins, mind you, with Mother. Queen motherfucking B, my idol, God damn it. You know I goes up for Mother. It starts off with her lyrics from freedom and she says trying to rain trying to rain on the thunder and then you hear the thunder crash boom and then you see Bo King Woodbine shoot the fuck up from the thunder and I'm like we ain't seen your ass in a minute my nigga what the fuck is going on so he gets out of bed and he looks over at his children and his I think his wife or whoever that was asleep and he you know he got his kinky yakky <laughs> weave going on honey he giving us natural teas so he goes out and do a full day's work he gets paid and then he has to hand the money over to a white man at the fellow plantation in Kentucky that night he returns home and we realize that throughout the day he was collecting newspaper clippings and he took them home and are reading them by candlelight I don't know if he was teaching himself to read or he was just catching up on the tea what was going on in the world so then we switch to Rosalie running for motherfucking life as she's chased by slave catchers mind you this whole season when they filmed Journey Smollett was pregnant as fuck filming this season she was already midway through her pregnancy as they were filming this whole entire season so you just gotta give her a hand clap and a praise for doing all of this work stunt work and all this shit while fucking pregnant if that ain't the power of a fucking black woman i don't even know what the hell to tell you so she's trying to help other people to freedom and she's cornered by two slave catchers who are, are point, pointing guns at her harriet motherfucking tub and my nigga then shows the fuck up with a shotgun and a hatchet and she says my arms are mighty tight and i aimed in this quick and the slave catcher guy says if you don't shut your mouth to put the weapon down ain't nobody got to die today not over no hurt nigga ain't that right Rosalie then says, gonna be more trouble than it's worth trying to get a man that can't walk to accept a reward. Harriet said, how about we make a sale? I'll give you $5 for him, same as you would have got, and $5 more for your hassle. So the dude turns his head, and as he's turning his head, Rosalie then grabs her gun from out of her little motherfucking pouch and shit, and she cocked that motherfucker to that nigga. Harriet says, $10 or two bullets, your choice. And I was like, bitch, you's a bad bitch. You's a bad bitch, bitch. You's a bad bitch. I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T. Do you know what that means? I think I spelled independent wrong, but y'all get the gist. The other guy says, I ain't scared of no nigga, bitch. And ain't nobody scared of you. Now, you heard me say my arms was tied. So what's it gonna be? And so the two dudes... Put the fucking guns down. We switched to John, who was in court, pleading Noah's case to be returned to Georgia. Noah has been locked away for five months, and John questions what kind of state he's in. Switched to Noah, who was in jail, and from the beginning of it, I thought that he was sharpening some metal to make like a homemade shape. But later on in the episode, I realized that that's not what he was doing. He overhears two other slaves talking about escaping, and peeps one of them trying to break a handle off of a water bin. We switch back to John, who is still housing slaves. Rosalie is there helping patch up the slave that was running away that she was trying to help. He fucked up his foot while trying to, you know, escape. So John tells Rosalie that the judge granted his request to inspect Susanna's property and that he thinks the judge might grant him his wish to send Noah back south. So Rosalie is ecstatic. She ain't seen her black knight, her black stallion in months. John says... He'll prolong the trial to get him back. He'll do whatever he needs to to get Noah back home to them. Rosalie then goes to talk to Harriet. She tells Harriet what John told her about Noah. Harriet says, you know, her plan is dangerous. Rosalie tells her that everything we do is dangerous, girl. Like, let me find out you a hater, Harriet. Like, what's the tea, bitch? So, Harriet says, Lord sent you to me to get your family back. Rosalie says, Noah is my family. He gave up his freedom for booing me. Harry says, he ain't blood, and hearts change. 
I know John hurt you, but this ain't like when you went back for him. So Harriet all up in her feelings because she went back to get her boo thing and you know he played her to the left and so she kind of feeling salty, you know what I'm saying, that Rosalie and Noah got a love thing going on and she ain't been getting no dick because she been out her friend slaves. I'm like, Harriet, just tooted and booted for somebody real quick and you get out your feelings, girl. Harriet tells her that this rescue is going to be the hardest thing she's ever done and Rosalie says that once she gets Noah back, they'll be able to get the rest of her family. We go to Roe Plantation, which I'm assuming um, is like somewhere in, on an island or something like that. That's what I'm assuming. Somebody please let me know down below if I'm correct with saying that. Ernestine is there. And I was like, oh, Steen, I missed you, bitch. I missed your little pint-sized Power Ranger ass. So her and her banging body is laying up with a man, honey. Ernestine ain't never lacking for no dick. She gonna get dick wherever the fuck she go. Ernestine goes to the cabinet and places some kind of liquid into a cloth and then snip and holds it up to her nose. She like, hey, bitch, you over there helping paint? What the fuck is going on, Steen? When you become a crackhead? Girl, let me find out. Steen is getting high now, and I could not be more disappointed. I'm like, Steen, you the baddest bitch I know. Why you getting high, girl? What? We switch to Steen. You know, working on the railroad and shit or whatever they was out there doing, digging up dirt. And a woman is singing her heart out, baby. I was like, girl, sing to the roofs. Sing to the mountaintops. And they all digging the shit. And while they're digging, every day Ernestine is huffing. She just huffing, huffing, huffing. Just keep her mind off this shit. Keep her mind off missing her kids. Keep her mind off everything that she's done foul in her life. She just huffing because she just in a fucked up ass place. So John stands and watches while Noah is being inspected by, you know, one of the little slave, you know, prison guys. So he's, Noah is sitting there fully naked. And child, I'm telling you, God blesses a black man. That man body is like a Ken doll. I mean, ain't an ounce of cellulite fat nowhere. Them thick legs, big ass feet, nice ass. Come on, Jesus. He's in good health. And John says that if the judgment falls his client's way, he'll want Noah on the next transport back to Georgia. John hints out loud so Noah can peep game that his niece is down from Canada and can't wait to reunite with the rest of the family. Letting Noah know that Rosalie is back from up north and is waiting for him. So you see the hope in his eyes. I'm like, I just want them to be together, Jesus. Let black love prosper. So, it's like on some Remy Ma and Papu shit, but switched so rosalie is at saint michael's hospital working and a white man comes to her up to her and asks her for a paper she shows him and says her name is barry she watches as one of the doctors orders a nurse to take his keys to get supplies while the patient is has, having a seizure so rosalie busts into the, the nurse on purpose so she could pickpocket the keys so when nobody's looking she goes into the supply cabinet and gets the whole bunch of shit so she can later on use it to help get Noah the fuck out of jail. We then see Elizabeth going into town with a basket of boiled eggs. And she goes to this little place. And we don't know what the fuck the place is. But we see white people there. Black people there. Everybody just kumbaya my lord. Kumbaya. Everything's good. This mixed girl come to the uh, counter and asks, you know, how may I help you? And er Elizabeth says, you know, a friend of a friend sent me and she shows her the basket with a half, you know, boiled eggs or whatever. The girl pulls out three cards and Elizabeth names has to name the people on the card, which are all freedom fighters. So once, you know, the girl realizes that Elizabeth is team freedom, she introduces herself as Georgia and then she introduces her to her ride or die bitches. And so the girls... Or it was two black girls and two white girls. And Georgia asked, so did everyone bring your kids? And so Elizabeth brews out a ball of yarn and shit, thinking they about to get to knitting and shit. The other girls, they get to pulling out guns. They pulling out guns from the motherfucking cabinet, from the motherfucking stove, from money plates and shit, from they bra. They got guns and shit everywhere. I'm like, ooh, y'all some rough riders up with this bitch. So Elizabeth was like, I thought we'd be doing some sewing. And they was like, we sew sometimes, girl. And Georgia tells her, welcome to the sewing circle. And I was like, shit, I want to be in the sewing circle shit initiate me initiate me i look the part at the prison noah peeps the two slaves preparing to escape one of them got the handle that he was trying to break off the little water bin and he's about to attack a guard but noah walks up and takes the handle from his hand and then throws it into the little dirty water bin the two men are pissed and they yoke him up like what the fuck you doing boy and so noah tells them that their plan was going to get them killed and shows them where they went wrong they ask him how he knows so much information noah says have you ever heard of the making seven 
They looking at him like he Obama or some shit. So dude says, even with that being said, why you care if we get ourselves killed? Noah says, I don't. But if you try and you fail, you might mess up my escape. So he tells them when they're transported the next day and get to the river, the wagon will be stopped and that they need to be ready when his friends appear. Back at the row plantation, one of the slave wranglers tells everybody that Mr. Rowe wants the western packs clear and asks how long will it take. So one of the dudes says it'll take up to three weeks. The wrangler says nope, y'all got four days. So Ernst thing, little boo thing from hit the floor, mind you, speaks up and tells him that they ca it can't be done. And then he get punched in the motherfucker's face. And I was like, well, bitch, that's what you get for talking so goddamn much. And so Ernst Thing just looking on and he looking at her like, you see this shit? Like, you ain't gonna help me, bitch? You ain't gonna help me? <laughs> so the sewing circle are practicing shooting at spoons while talking about the injustice of slavery. They aim to bring the narrative into home so people will incite good action and help out the Southern Negro. We switch to John in court. The judge denies his request to release Noah and won't allow John to file another motion. The judge says Noah is guilty for what he's done and will be hanged. Rosalie is watching from the rafters and she is fucking distraught. We go back to John and Elizabeth's house and Rosalie is pissed. She going off on John. She's like, I thought you said we was going to get a free. You had me hoping and wishing and praying and shit and wishing on the star. So he says that he can't believe the judge would just bypass the legal system and Rosalie says you open your eyes this happened all the time in the north in the south it don't matter rules don't apply to black folks and I was like bitch you better speak a motherfucking word back then and now it don't apply to black folks girl shit come to the future so John look at her like well bitch you told me shit so Elizabeth says that they have to figure out a way to save Noah John says they'll only be able to rescue him when he's on the gallows about to be hanged. He knows some of the workers that built the gallows that can help, but once they get Noah, it's only three of them against all of the marshals in the square. Elizabeth reminds them that it's just not three of us. We got help. We got partners and shit now, nigga. It ain't just three of us. We got a whole motherfucking crew. So Rosalie says if any parts of this go wrong, we all go end up in jail. And John said, well, bitch, we about to all be up in the motherfucker together, shit. Let's roll. Don't be no punk now, Rosalie. So it's a revival going on at the Row Plantation. Everybody dancing and singing and shit and, you know, drinking and saying hymns and everything. But Ernestine is off to the side not participating. So she's watching as her little boo thing is dancing and shit, doing the Charleston and all type of shit. So she sees visions of Boo's mother, Pearly Mae, again. She saw her early when she was digging and shit. And you know she feels guilty because she killed Pearly Mae. So her boo come over and say, he say, where you at? And she was like, nowhere. And then they run off into the bushes and shit. And they get the fucking, like they on Showtime after dark. And I was like, well shit, put your back into it, Ernestine. Shit, I see you, bitch. John and Elizabeth are sitting at their dining room table talking. And he's struggling with his feelings towards his brother Tom's death, who was Rosalie's father. You know, he said that he couldn't believe that Tom would kill Rosalie's brother and hang him on his front porch for everyone to see. And that after that, that's when he realized he couldn't take it no more and he just had to help no matter the fuck what. So there is an open seat on the board of commons and he can put his name on the ballot and start making fair rulings. And he asked Elizabeth how she feels about this. And she says, I think it's a great idea. And I'm like, John, it's a fabulous idea. You can make change when you're on the inside of the system. Noah is being beat by the slave handles before being taken out to be hung. Switch back to the row plantation. And the slave handler that punched Ernestine's boot thing in the face comes by with a box of that liquid shit that they've been over there snuffing and shit. I don't know what the fuck it is. Somebody tell me what the hell it is. Supplying Ernestine's boot thing who was then supplying it to the slave. So the slave handler tells him to make sure... They're not taking too much of it. And Ernestine Boothane says he can't control what the fuck they do. Well, he shouldn't have said that because Slave Handle had to slap his ass again. He kicked him and says, I want them docile, not dead. Ernestine just sitting there eating her rice, baby, unbothered and unfocused. And she just trying to eat and she ain't trying to get involved in none of this bullshit going on behind her. So the dude leave and Ernestine Booth then come over to the table. He look at the rice. I'm tired of eating rice. And Ernestine said, you ain't got to eat it. Well, bitch, he slaps Ernestine so hard that she back in Georgia. <laughs> Ernestine, when, after he slapped her, Ernestine turned around like a cat. Like, 
Nigga, did you really? Like, do you know I killed niggas on a daily? Did you really just slap me, bitch? And I was like, oh, nigga, you gonna die eventually. We gonna say sorry now to you. Who gonna bring what to the funeral shit? He then walks past her. He leaves and shit. And Ernestine, after he leaves, Ernestine gets up, goes back over to the cabinet, takes out some more of the little liquid shit she been snuffing, and gets high. And then she sees Pearly May again. And so Pearly May asks her, so this your life now? And then we switch to Noah, who is about to be hanged. The noose is being placed around his neck. And as he's standing there preparing to die, he hears a whistling sound. And he realizes that it's Rosalie. So he's looking all around the crowd and shit. And then he spots Rosalie who's standing there. And so they just looking at each other back and forth. And they just so happy to see each other. So she puts her bandana over her mouth like... Just be prepared. So she walk off and then she grabs a little Molotov cocktail that she'd made up. She poured a liquid and shit all on the ground and light it on fire. And then an explosion goes off and everybody gets to screaming and running. Then another one goes off right underneath the gallows. And so it drops to the floor. Noah breaks the loose off of his neck. And then John swoops in on the motherfucking wagon. They ride off. And as the marshals are trying to stop them, the sewing circle... And they whole little crew roll up with signs saying Black Lives the Fuck Matter <laughs> and stop them so they can't get to them. John, Noah, and the two slaves are in the back of the wagon and John is, you know, trying to get the horses to fucking go and they are being followed and they realize it's not the marshals that are following them. So Noah grabs John's gun and get to shooting at him. He shoot a few of them, but then they shoot two of the two slaves that was in the back of the wagon with them. So one of the slave catchers or whoever the fuck they were jumps into the wagon and pushes Noah off. We switch back to the rope plantation. Ernestine sitting there at the table nodding off and shit. You know, she's still having hallucinations of Pearly and May being there. Pearly May tells Ernestine that death has been following her all around and that she thought she could beat it. She says, you sacrificed your dignity your children and me at the altar of your privilege. Is it the black in you? The black ain't gonna never stop haunting you. Try to forget and look at you. Try to forget and look what forgetting got you. Little girl ran away. Little boy don't belong to you no more. And Sam, well he be swinging from the porch of that big house you thought you own. You sad pretty little thing. I bet you told yourself you was being tough. All them pieces you cut out, you keep on. But just because you survived don't make you strong. You was just you. Just do it. That's what you want, ain't it? Ever since you hung massa, when you gave up, just do it. Because this, you sitting around waiting for him to do it, for him to beat it out you, for him to beat you to death, it's pitiful. Just kill yourself. Girl, that dialogue was everything. We go back to John, and John is fighting with one of the little slave wranglers as Elizabeth and Rosalie ride up. So John is able to grab a, a knife and stab that guy in the neck. Rosalie jumped out the wagon and said, where Noah? And he says, they got him. And she said, who, the marshals? And John said, no, there wasn't no marshals. And then we see Noah in the back of the wagon with his head, his face covered. And he pulls out a ring. That metal that he was fucking with, he was making it into a ring to give to Rosalie. Lord, I want a man to love me like that shit! He places the ring on his finger and of course it can't fit because, you know, it was made for a woman. We see Rosalie out in the forest picking leaves and shit. And she just in tears because she almost had him. She almost had him after five months of not seeing him. So then we see Ernestine and she laid up in the bed with Ike Jr. They hiding the motherfucker. And I'm like, Ernestine, this is your brain on drugs. Like, what are you doing? And I was sitting here at this point like, okay, this episode, it was good. It wasn't nothing that like jolted me. Like just took me over the edge, made me cry, fucked me up. And I was like, okay, this is a nice little start. Like I give it a B plus though for Then we see, oh shit, John signing his name on the ballot. Him and Elizabeth walking out the build, happy as a motherfucker getting their taxes back. They holding hands and shit, and when we hear John, whatever his last name is, they look and then pow! He is shot in the head right there on the steps. His brains are blown out. He and Elizabeth fall. He falls down the steps. His body is laid out on the steps. Elizabeth is sitting there like, no! 
And I'm sitting there like, Jesus, help us! Oh! Oh my God. Like, no lie. I'm sitting there watching the TV like this. <gasps> like, I sat there like this for no lie, at least three minutes, just holding my breath, looking at the screen like they got me. Like, I knew John was going to die, but I did not expect for John to die episode one, season two, on the first episode back. <sighs> Oh my God, we all know it's going to be casualties of war, especially with everything that was going on. Everybody didn't survive, everybody didn't make it. <sighs> A plus, 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 the season premiere coming back. They got me again. I could not fucking believe it. The writing is just impeccable. They got me back into the groove. I realized why I loved this show so much last season when it, when it premiered. I don't know if I'm ready for this emotional roller coaster they about to send us on. I'm not ready for these tears that I know about to drop. I'm just not ready. I'm not prepared. I tried to get prepared, but obviously I'm not. We got nine more episodes the fuck to go, Jesus. Oh my Lord. Let me know what you thought about the season premiere down below in the comment section. How did John's death affect you? Jesus be offense. Let me know what you thought about everything in tonight's episode and make sure to thumbs up this video if you liked it. Please subscribe to my channel and turn on that notification bell so you know when my videos drop. I love you all so much. and Love you guys so much. Tell all your family and friends about my reviews. See you later. Bye.